Hey, welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today it's circuit day. It's been a while since I've been out at ASC and done a few circuits in the Cessna and it's about time I got some practice back under my belt. If you can't fly a good circuit, you're not going to be a good pilot. So let's go. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in X-Plane 11. Props, jets and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave your comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well welcome here to Gawler and uh, uh, we're ready to go flying in our Skyhawk today. November 172 Sierra Papa. Today's all about getting up and getting down as accurately as possible, which is what the whole point of doing circuits is. You need to be consistent each takeoff, each turn, each speed adjustment should mimic the previous circuit as much as possible. So let's go through, uh, have a check of the, the aircraft before we get it all fired up. So just having a look, we can have a look at the um, the instrumentation in general. Uh, obviously, it's all turned off, so and the mixture's all out, the throttle's all out. Now we've got a couple of things to adjust. We need to adjust our altimeter, but firstly, we need to adjust our compass here to make sure it is reading correctly. And obviously, it's not at the moment. So we get that rotated around. The wind at the moment. Uh, is not too bad for coming down zero five it's about 10 knots coming from zero four zero so uh, that's going to give us a slight left crosswind but nothing much to write home about so our headings all set up and ready let's adjust the altimeter now we're at 165 feet above sea level here so we get that adjusted correctly let's get the battery on see my rudders have kicked off again so let's just reconnect those there we go, level out again. They're all working. So let's get ourselves started up. Okay, that's the fuel shut off. So that's now in. There's our fuel selector, make sure it's on both. Brakes working fine. And that comes off when we apply the brakes. Our trim is set. And just quick visual reference through again this is something you'll do over and over you know every time you look back at the panel you'll give it a quick glance over so let's get the battery on first so we can see we've got fuel that's already some of the lights have already gone off we need to put our mixture in we're going to run our fuel pump Just to get a little bit of fuel flow in there. Just checking all our lights, check our enunciators. And we need to put some lights on so people know we're about to do something. So we'll get those on. Strobes and things. You leave to later, they're very high intensity and they can cause people um, some discomfort. So let's get everything ready now. Let's get it all cranked over. We give it a bit of a start with the fuel pump got a bit of fuel in there so and we're idling nicely looking for about uh, 900 well we're about 700 uh, rpm at the moment so but it's idling smoothly which is fine again fuels good temperatures will take a little time to come up so we need to allow for that we do have a vacuum and our amps are showing fine get our avionics on so we can get our uh, radios let's check out uh, okay let's check out the ATIS 
Win zero four zero at six. Zero four zero at six knots. Sky conditions one thousand five hundred scattered, three thousand five hundred broken. Temperature one three, two point one two. Altimeter three zero three three. Arriving runways zero three left, zero three right. Departing runways zero three left, zero three right. So this Aedes um, is coming from Edinburgh. So that's the Air Force Base, which is pretty much straight ahead of us there, or maybe a little bit to the right um, and some distance away. Before we go flying here at uh, Adelaide, or Adelaide Soaring Club or ASC, we do have to check the airspace as well, which is something we do before we come out to the aircraft, because the military often close some of this airspace off, and then we can't even get off the ground. So, but we've got well, 1,500 feet, and we're going to remain in circuit. So we're going to be, we can have a few hundred feet of uh, safety distance there, so that should be fine. Departing runway zero three left, zero three right. We can check our uh, set setting is correct. Now the plan is, we're going to taxi out, we're going to cross over runway 31, which is running from left to right immediately ahead of us, and then we're going to cross over to the taxiway, we will taxi down to the far end of the airport in the direction we're currently looking, and from there we'll do engine run-ups before entering into the... Uh, 05 runway, we'll backtrack on that, go back a ways and then get ready for our takeoff. And this is all real time, you know, I've not actually cut much out of this guys, so this is at how it would happen if you were um, actually sitting in a Jabiru here, which is what I would normally fly. The only additional um, issue we have with flying the 172 is that we have to manage our own mixture. In the Jabiru series, they all have altitude compensating carburetors, so we never have to worry about doing mixtures and stuff uh, in the one in the 160s, 70s, and the and the 230, the big um, 120 horsepower six cylinder model. That's really beautiful to fly that thing. That goes like a rocket. Okay, getting ready to go. Check our flight controls are free and correct. Have a look out your window, make sure when you turn right that the elevators are going in the right direction. Rudders are working. Brakes off and ready to go. So call the traffic. 172 Sierra Popper taxiing for runway 05 crossing runway 31 for the taxiway Gawler. Now if you're flying um, in parafield or somewhere you would need to call for engine start often as well. But this is an uncontrolled airport, there's no towers so all our radio calls are advisories to other people in the area. Taxi down as smoothly as possible. We'll get down to the the markers here and um, have a quick look right and left before we taxi out onto the runway. We haven't had any calls yet, so we should be fine. But a quick look is always advisable. Just break there. Let's have a look around the pattern. And break on. Nothing's rushed. You never rush anything, guys. That's when you make mistakes. Okay, have a look left. Nothing approaching. We've had a look down the pattern, which is going left to right. So we're looking through this way here. We can check there's nothing coming in from the other side. Pattern ahead of us is clear and uh, out to the right and the runway is clear. Bit of magic jumping into the back seat okay brakes off all clear let's taxi out we go we know we're going to need a little bit more 
power than we probably should going across the runway. We have the taxiways here, or the takeoff strips as they are. These are asphalt, and uh, they make taxi taking off um, uh, a real pleasure. But they're not very wide, so you do have to be accurate with your rudder. So we'll go across here. This tends to be a lot harder to get across than it really is. It's probably three times more um, than you need. Normally you can just add a little power in the real world and taxi across. I was at ASC just a little while back. If you saw some of my recent videos with the walk around of the real Jabiru 170. If you're interested in this particular uh, airport and you would like it, please let me know. Um, I have built this one and it's on a uh, ortho tile, so there is nothing normally here. So every building and object that you see, other than that um, windsock on the left there, um, that's about the only thing that I think comes with the airport. So coming up to the airport line here so we're just going to taxi up here we need to do a run up and make sure our magnetos are working correctly so we'll put our brake on now the procedure is we're going to run the engine up to about 1700 rpm and then we will select the right magneto off and we should get a little 50 maybe 50 rpm drop and then click it on to uh, both again and then back and do the check mag left mag and that should get a little drop so here we go rpm up so it's not massive you don't go up into the green zone just 1700 rpm or so then we'll just select you can just click on it and it just drops a little back up and it recovers and back onto the left mag and all good and it recovers and the other important thing is just check your um, mixture to make sure it's operating correctly. If you pull it out too much, obviously you lean too much and the engine will cut out. And it's also important just to uh, be conscious of your exhaust gas temperatures there on that second upper small gauge. You can see there with the needle moving. If you leave it cold, the chances are you'll foul the plugs in a Cessna and um, you won't get full power and they might run rough and when you do your uh, carby when you do your uh, magnet checks then often it will run rough then so then you run it up to a bit more somewhere around about the 1700 and then you can lean it out a little it'll get hotter it'll burn off all the rubbish and uh, and then clean up most of the time okay we checked around the pattern brakes off and let's taxi out all the traffic Cessna 172 Sierra Popper taxiing out and backtracking on runway 05 Gawler let's get our transponder up and running on 1200 the VFR, VFR identifier and then have that turn on so people can see us Okay, a little power out. This is a, you know, it's quite a nice day. This is a very a typical day uh, in Gawla too, uh, in the winter time especially, uh, having low cloud and it being a little bit on the murky side. So we're just going to come down a little ways. This runway used to continue on quite a bit further, but since they built the freeway that you see is once we've taken off, um, yeah, they've they cut quite a few hundred meters off the end of it on us. And our uh, clubhouse that used to be down straight down there where you're looking there at the moment, so it all got moved. So you can see the windsock, a little bit of a breeze, just a little bit from left to right. Let's get ourselves straightened up. Yes, it does take a little time, doesn't it? It's all very easy to cut it all out and um, just go from flick to flick to one other place. But on this occasion, I thought it was worthy of um, just bringing you through the whole ride. Um, 
Now in simulators it's very easy to just to jump through and if you're making a quick video. Okay, we're all ready, we're checking our flow controls, we're ready to go. We're going to get our pump on, we're going to get our lights on. Got all the traffic, Cessna 172 Sierra Popper, rolling on one way, runway 05 Gawler. Okay, all ready to go. Smooth on the power, smooth on the rudders. A little bit too much, just ease off, keep it straight. If you get that squeak, it's because you're overcompensating, so just ease it back off a little bit. Not quite straight, there we go at 55. Engine's all green, climbing out, and we're going to aim for about 75 knots. Now with the air, airport at about 165 feet, and we're looking out over to Gawler. And left as we're going to turn, so we're on our um, climb out. Then we're going to turn on upwind. Okay, so there's upwind, downwind, base and final. So now we're now turning on our upwind link, if you're not familiar. So the circuit is basically something of a rectangle. So we climb to 500 feet above ground level, AGL. Then we climb another 500 feet. This is if you do it well. Now we're going to check inbound because we would expect aircraft to come from the right. And we would look left to make sure this, uh, see if there's anything in the pattern. Now we're up to just over pattern height. So we back up, check down there and we can see the... Um, the two sets of uh, glass houses that are actu actually there. Okay, so we use those as a, um, a reference point as we turn left. And now we're heading down on our downwind leg. So here we're getting really, this is where you start your landing preparation. Try and get it all balanced out, get it trimmed, have the airstrip about about halfway up that strut. We're probably a little bit further out, but that's fine. We can have a gentle turn when we turn on base. So we're checking our fuel, we're checking our fuel switch, we're checking our brakes, we're checking our mixture, we're checking our harnesses, our hatches, and we're getting our RPM set up. In the Jabra, you'd, you'd pull the heat out as well, which would be um, just about where the throttle is there. And when you're about 45 degrees past the end of your expected landing point, that's when you start your base turn. So we're going first stage of flap and trimming. You'll tend to balloon, so you need a little bit of nose down trim. And you can see we already have 500 feet per minute descent rate, which is about perfect. That's really about what you want. When we turn left onto our base leg, Hopefully we send, descend down to about 500 feet above ground level, AGL. And that should put us in about the right place for a nice gentle approach into the main runway. It is a little bit harder in the sim. Um, if you have face track or you're in VR, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier. But I've chosen not to use the face track today. Little gentle turn. And we're turning a little bit early. You can see the runway... Um, just inside the the pillar it's not too clear but I'm sure you'll be able to see it so we've turned a little bit early but my uh, efforts of late have always been turning late which means I've been trying to turn back onto the runway so a nice gentle approach we're just under we're about 300 odd feet above ground level RPMs and uh, speed or well, the speed's a little low I'm going to maintain around about 70 knots on the way in and this one we're going to bring into a full stop. Now I haven't gone through radio calls during the circuit, but we'll do those next time around, just so you know what's required. Don't take it as a tutorial, I'm no CFI. But if you do this well, it'll make you a much better sim and real world pilot. So you're aiming to land at the same point. Now as we come in, we're going to move our view from the runway to the end of the runway 
and check that distance between the cowling at the top there of the instrument panel and the uh, end of the runway there. My nose is coming up a little more and there we go. A nice gentle touchdown but we did float a lot longer than I would have liked. So that, that's called a flare. So we'll clean up the aeroplane and we'll turn around and go back and the next few flights that we do around the circuit will all be um, touch and goes but I wanted to stop the first time so we put everything away flaps away put everything back there now we're ready to go again powering away keeping it straight instruments everything's in the green coming up to 50 knots 55 60 knots there climbing away at about well we actually get a good climb rate on this so let's try and include the what the radio calls would be as well and we've got uh, Austin with us today he's not sure where he comes from he hides in the glove box on the right hand side so if you click on the glove box get Mr. Myers out and put him up there. So we're turning now at 500 feet. We're turning upwind. Now you don't generally do an upwind radio call but you do a radio call before you turn downwind. So as we turn around and we're just coming up to the right angle we check our inbound, we check our in circuit and then radio call is Gawler traffic. Cessna 172 Sierra Papa turning left downwind for runway 05 Gawler don't need to be too quick but you just need to make the call people know where you are in the circuit and again we're turning left and we're coming down past those um, greenhouses again so well we're consistent at least on our climb and our turn so our speeds up a little bit probably get ourselves trimmed down I normally find when we get to runway 1331 here this cross strip is a good time to get the RPMs back and do your pre-landing so you're going to be checking your brakes your fuel quantities your fuel switch your harness your hatches your heat make sure everything's locked up and then look to get your first stage of flap out and get it trimmed get the speed down and get yourself ready so if you're just going through the checks there okay rpm coming back now and if we keep our attitude once we get trimmed but if we keep our attitude and we remove the rpm without changing the pitch of the aircraft we will start a descent so power controls your descent nice gentle turn and you want to keep your turns nice and gentle in in the circuit this is where people die because they try and hoof around like they're in a fighter and we're very far from it so you can see the runway there just inside the strut we've got a good descent rate you can see the VSI there is showing about five to seven hundred sort of wallows around a bit now if you expect now we're turning final, so we need a radio call. Uh, call the traffic, Cessna 172 Sierra Papa turning final for runway 05, Gawler. And again, not quite getting that turn good, so obviously need some more practice here. Okay, we're definitely going to make that now. I'm pretty comfortable with that. We have 70 knots. We're at 500 feet AGL. But the second one we'll get it in we're aiming now the aiming point is the first strip of white paint that you can see on the runway that's where I'm aiming to touch down but I seem to always even in the in the Cessnas or in the Jabiru's um, I seem to be rounding out there or flaring there and not touching down till a bit later on sometimes right up to the cross strip so that, that comes from carrying too much speed this is much better we're coming over, we're now at 60 knots, we're bringing the nose up and we're trying to keep that nose up steady and there we go, a nice gentle touch down so we check our trims, get our flaps back up 
and applying power gently and keeping on the rudders. I have had us uh, Jabiru decide to go left quickly when I put the power on and we uh, we were on the right hand side of the strip and we headed left fairly quickly with my instructor but caught it and it was fine and we went on so um, yeah you know that's the great thing about X-Plane 11 is that it is pretty accurate if you could get a bit more of the force feedback then it would bring it another step closer again and if you had a, uh, a six degree of movement uh, simulator then um, you probably wouldn't tell a lot of difference you get that motion okay turning upwind pause as I took an outside view. One thing I don't do enough, I know guys, is uh, give you some outsides, you need to do some outsides and fly past. There's the um, the main highway. And they're back inside again, so let's get ourselves, let's concentrate on what we're doing. So I know I am because I've got the marker on the compass there, checking inbound, checking down the pattern, everything's good, height's good. Gawler traffic, Cessna 172, Sierra Papa turning left downwind for 05, Gawler. And again, we're back lined up with those glass houses again. So that part of it at least is consistent. Our altitude is about right. We're just a little over, but that's um, that's okay. That's acceptable. We settle down, we bring the power back a little bit, and we do our pre-landing checks, so it's brakes fuel quantities there's our brake check fuel quantities fuel switch harness hatches and heat when we're checking in our instrumentation is all still in the green checking our altitude okay we've gained a little bit but um, not uncommon guys not even in a real one yet it's hard to just nail it I think it's just a lot of practice Okay, we're bringing the RPM back and our speeds back into the white zone and we're now coming well past the, um, approaching that 45 degree point where we want to do our turn, so it would be Gawler traffic, Cessna 172, Sierra Papa turning left base for runway 05, touch and go, Gawler. very crucial that you use the name uh, at the beginning and end guys uh, if you're flying out um, away from Gawla in the, again in the real world there's a number of airports that use the same CTAF frequency they don't have their own individual so um, there can be three or four different airports all operating getting calls so you'd be very specific with the name of the airport that you're concerned with looking nice we're level again that doesn't look too bad our descent rates good trims good the speeds good first stage flat down looking nice Austin thinks it's okay he's given us the nod speeds good about 70 knot but uh, that's still a little high um, and yes it doesn't seem much but if it seems high and we get to this point then you make that decision. You fold it up and you go again. Go around, go around, go around. Call the traffic, Cessna 172, Sierra Papa going around. Call her. In some of the instructions you hear, going missed, but going around's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with, people exactly uh, understand exactly what you're doing. Let's climb out again. Checking inbound still. Getting some good FPS too. Just up around the 60s at the moment. It's really nice. So turning left on our... Which one's this? Yes, upwind. We're doing our upwind leg now. As we turn across. And you note on the compass I've got the, the little red marker which shows our heading uh, for our takeoff on the runway. So you know it's at 40 it's 90 degrees to the right when we're on upwind then it's 100 by 180 degrees behind us so call the traffic Cessna 172 Sierra Papa turning left downwind for runway 05 Gawler and again we've nailed the same situation straight over those um, glass houses 
and heading down so getting ready we're checking our brakes we're checking our fuel quantities we're checking our fuel switch to make sure the fuel pump is on we're trimming we're checking our altitude checking our rpm and always constantly just scanning across the engine instrumentation and i've just chosen to bring the uh, mixture out a little bit just to make sure that we've got a bit of um a bit of work happening on those plugs just cleaning them up a little bit in case they're getting fouled um, with the low power settings and uh, it being on full reach there's a chance that, that could happen so um, if you're a real world Cessna pilot out there and I'm doing this wrong feel free to just uh, leave me a comment and also guys I will leave you some links down the bottom there so you can jump from part to part uh, in the circuit if you like okay we're turning left base aren't we so call the traffic Cessna 172 Sierra Papa turning left base for runway 05 Gawler and getting our descents down let's have a look out there looking good looks pretty comfortable in the real world actually I would normally a little bit closer than this it always seems like it's a lot steeper uh, coming in in the Cessna so I like being a little bit further out and being a little bit more let's call it GA if nothing else on that gentler approach okay we're a little bit under turned again but I'd rather be a little under than over because when you're over turned you tend to want to come back in so all right let's give a radio call Cessna call the traffic Cessna 172 Sierra Puppet final runway 05 Gawler is nice and stabilized you want to be good and stabilized at about let's say 500 feet but certainly by 200 if you're not stabilized by 200 as we weren't really in the last one we're a little high yeah so this is a good one so i think we might call this quits today i feel pretty comfortable with what we've done i hope you've enjoyed come along for the flight let's uh, get this down nice and safe now Been pretty good not much of a crosswind today if you want to see what happens with the crosswinds i do have some older videos where we did some big crosswinds at williamtown and uh, there we go look at that just rudder to straighten up don't use the elevators to turn left and right it's your rudders there we go and there's that distance you need between the top of the cowl and that uh, the end of the strip that's we're already on the ground at that point but you know you get the general idea that's the two reference points you have when you're um on your when you're flaring that's what you're looking for okay so let's turn the pump off uh, turn all the unnecessary stuff off at the moment uh, get the flaps up get the trim just back centered so it's just nice and comfortable for the next person bit of power and taxi off onto the taxiway or the takeoff strip as it really is don't get caught landing on these guys I did that a few times it shows how accurately you can land if you can put it back on down this little strip but uh, they're not designed to take the weight of an aircraft so you, know, you land on the dirt and you take off on the tarmac coming back in in my recent trip home I noticed there's a whole range of new um, private hangars here it's quite a big club now so if you're ever in the area um, come visit uh, flying on Wednesdays and Saturdays as their main instrument uh, main instructional days and we're now clear of the runway so we'll call uh, Gawler traffic Cessna 172 Sierra Papa clear of all runways Gawler so everybody knows we're now off now taxi in and this is it's it's about 90 percent right now the hangars are not a are not perfect they're probably a little bit smaller than the ones we have here on the uh, on there but when I find um, a, a better set of hangers and we'll do that we'll put something better there if somebody could make me uh, a nice flying Jabiru that'd be awesome I know there is one but it doesn't have a 3d cockpit guys and it's just um, yeah if you can't look around it's the, the realism's not there and that's what we're looking for isn't it you see the Robins park there okay did a recent uh, some flights where we did some spins in a Robin that was uh, that was really great fun too you can download the Robin for free as well. That's a great aeroplane. Finished really well from uh, from a French site, not off the Orc, I don't think. Although you may find it there as well. Okay, let's uh, turn everything down. I'll turn everything off. Okay, everything's all good. 
we've got plenty of fuel left everything's in the green we do just want to do a quick mag check before we finish to make sure none of the mags have failed we don't need to run it up but what we will do is check uh, or turn a right, right one off turn a left one off if the engine shuts down then we know there's definitely an issue with it and then we'll report that so all of that's good can't tell you how often you'll be doing this guys if you actually go flying you know you've got to do a lot of circuits it's just part of your skill skill set okay let's check okay back off one and we were good back up and then one two we'll turn the other one off engine continues to run fantastic so we know everything's good there and we can now shut down I was just checking to see whether those other controls actually did anything so um, you can choose to turn the switch off or you can turn choose to just pull the uh, mixture out I believe and because that starves the engine and then it doesn't leave any fuel sitting in it too so um, yeah uh, my choice is to go that way and the engine shuts down and it's quiet yeah well, thanks for coming along, guys. I hope you managed to stay with me. I know sometimes these sort of flights can be a little bit boring, but uh, it's something, no matter whether you fly the big tube liners or whether you're flying GA like myself or helicopters, you need to be able to do all these skills, the taxiing, the takeoff, the landing, all the processes in between there. Um, it's just going to make you a better pilot. So... Until next time, don't forget, if you're uh, new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're coming back, thanks for coming along and your support. And uh, until next time, we'll see you again here at Let's Fly VFR. Fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.